Hi students, today I am going to deal the topic electrical activity of the muscles EMG, electromyogram from the chapter introduction to biomedical instrumentation. Upon completion of this presentation, you will be able to understand the concepts of electrical activity of the muscles, electrodes used for EMG measurement, schematic diagram of EMG machines working of EMG machine and application of EMG machine or EMG measurement. Upon completion of this presentation, you will be able to understand the electrical activity of the muscles EMG, electrodes used for EMG measurement, schematic diagram of EMG machine, working of EMG machine and applications of EMG measurement. Upon completion, you will be able to understand about the electrical activity of the muscles. First and foremost thing is, what are muscles and what are its functions? Muscle function. Muscles are physiological motors of the human body. Kinematics and kinetics give us a good indication of the muscle groups. Only when your body muscles are able to work together, you are able to move your body parts. Kinematics and kinetics gives us a good indication of muscle groups. For increased specificity, we measure a muscle activity during gait. For increased specificity, we measure a muscle's activity during gait. So, electromyography. We, could, we would like to, I would like to define what is electromyography. It is the detection and recording of electrical signals produced by the muscle tissues as it contracts. It is the detection and recording of the electrical signals which are produced by the muscle tissue as it contracts, as it contracts. Electromyography is the detection and recording of the electrical signals that are produced by the muscle tissue as it contracts, as it contracts. Muscle activation. Measurement of electrical signals within the muscles with two electrodes is possible. Okay. So, a summation of the action potentials generated during the contraction due to a change in the cell membrane potential results in EMG signal. So, when two electrodes are used, you are going to measure the electrical signals within the muscle. And when the summation of the electrical potentials generated during contraction due to a change in the cell's membrane potential, it results in the EMG signal. The size of the signal is dependent on the number and on the frequency of the firing of motor units. It depends upon the number and the frequency of the firing motor units. Motor units are nothing but muscle fibers, group of several muscle fibers together form the motor unit which is responsible for movement of the body parts. Why do we measure EMG? What is the necessity to measure EMG? Measures, measuring the muscle activity during gait allows an indication to the muscle whether the muscle is active whether the muscle is active or inactive. It gives the condition of the muscle and it is used to relatively change, uh, it sees relative changes in the timings of the muscle. It is used to assess motor control and coordination. It is used to determine any evidences of spasticity and it evaluates muscle function post-surgical transfer. Post-surgical transfer. So, measuring the muscle, or muscle activity during gait allows an indication to whether the muscle is active, to see relative changes in the timings of the muscles, to assess motor control and coordination, to determine any evidence of spasticity, to evaluate muscle function post-surgical transfer, post-surgical transfer. Then, what does EMG tell you? By observing the EMG, what you can do, what you can do and what you can understand what EMG tells you and what it does not tell you. What it does not tell you. It does not, doesn't tell you the strength of the muscle and what type of movement that signal represents. 
and whether the activity is com compensatory or primary abnormality. It doesn't tell these three things. EMG doesn't tell you certain things. What does EMG identify? That I'll go to going to tell you the next uh, uh, next part of this presentation. During the first part, what what I wanted to tell you is the EMG it does not tell you the strength of the muscle. It does not tell you the type of movement the signal represents, and it whether the activity is compensatory or primary abnormality. That these things it doesn't mention or it doesn't uh, let you know. Then what does EMG can tell us? What does EMG can tell us? Electromyography, what, what it can tell you? Whether the muscle is active or inactive. Whereas it doesn't tell you the strength of the muscle, but it will tell you whether the muscle is active or inactive in a given task. Suppose you are moving your limb, the muscles have to undergo some action there. Then the electromyogram will give you the whether the muscle is active or inactive. When does the muscle turn on and turn off? Turn on and turn off. When does the muscle turn on and turn off? Is there a temporal, temporal relationship between the muscles of interest? It will tell you whether there is a temporal relationship between the muscles of the interest. Is the magnitude of the EMG activity greater? If it is greater, if the magnitude of the EMG activity is greater, implies you are under higher stress. Okay? Is the muscle fatigued? That means it is under stress, under uh, stress and strain. Is the muscle injured or diseased? Some pathological profiles can be extracted from the EMG signature. So these are the things which the electromyograph graphy tells you. It relates to you. It gives the information whether the muscle is active or inactive in a given task. What the muscle, whether the muscle is turn on or turn off. Is there a tempor temporal relationship between the muscles of the interest? Is the magnitude of the EMG activity greater? If the magnitude is greater, that means you are subjected to, that muscle is subjected to higher stress. Is the muscle fatigued? Is the muscle injured or diseased? And some pathological profiles can be extracted from the EMG signature. From the EMG signature. Then, so these are the things which the EMG depicts. Electromyography. So, electromyography is a technique for evaluating and recording the electrical activities produced by the skeletal muscles. It is used for evaluating and recording the electrical activity produced by the skeletal muscles. It is a technique for evaluating and recording the electrical activity produced by the skeletal muscles. It is performed using an instrument called an electromyograph to produce a record called as electromyogram. So, electromyograph is an instrument which is used to produce the electrical activity of the muscles. A resting muscle, when we take the case of a resting muscle, it does not show any recordable electrical potential. But with increase of force of contraction, when the muscle begins to move, when it contracts, the amplitude of the potential increases. So, an electromyograph detects electrical potentials generated by the muscle cells when these cells are electrically or neurologically activated. You don't get any record of the electrical potential if the muscles are at rest. Only if they are subjected to contraction, what happens? The increase of force of contraction, the amplitude of your potential increases. The amplitude of the potential increases. So, an electromyograph detects electrical potential generated by the muscle cells when these cells are electrically or neurologically activated. When these cells are electrically or neurologically activated. Or neurologically activated. So, electromyograph is an instrument which is used to record the electrical activity of the muscles to determine whether the muscle is contracting or not 
or for display in CRO and loudspeaker the action potential. So, you are going to represent the record the electrical activity of the muscles to determine their action potentials that are being generated because of contraction of the muscles. Okay, and they can be displaced, displayed in the CRO and loudspeaker. Spontaneously present in the muscle or for recording the electrical activity involved in the muscle by the stimulation of its nerves. You need an external stimuli to produce action potential. That already you know. External energy supply is needed for the cell to change from resting state to action state. So, the record of muscle contraction is called as myogram. Muscle contractions are caused by depolarization of the muscle fibers. This you know already. Depolarization, the process of changing from resting state to action state is called depolarization of the muscle fibers. The muscle potentials range from 20 microvolts to 5 millivolts. 20 microvolts to 5 millivolts and the duration is 2 to 15 milliseconds. So, the muscle potentials ranges from 20 microvolts to 5 millivolts and the duration is from 2 to 15 milliseconds. 2 to 15 milliseconds. So, electromyogram is the, in, is the electrical activity, is the record. Electromyograph is an instrument which is used to record the electrical activity of the muscles and electromyogram is the record of the muscle contraction. It is the record of muscle contraction. So, you are going to measure the potentials uh, of the electrical act. You are going to measure the potential biopotentials that are generated due to the electrical activity of the muscles. So, the potentials are measured by using specific electrodes. Specific electrodes. So, we are going to use two types of electrodes that is surface electrodes and needle electrodes. So, the electrodes that are used for EMG measurement are there are several types of electrodes which are used for EMG measurement. The electrodes that are most commonly used for EMG measurement are surface electrodes and needle electrodes. There are two types of electrodes which are used for EMG measurement that is surface electrodes and needle electrodes. What are surface electrodes? Surface electrodes consist of metal discs with diameter which are varying from 0.5 to 2.5 centimeters. They are small metallic discs uh, with a diameter of 0.5 to 2.5. It is not possible to take the deep, deeper potentials within the surface electrodes. Hence, if you want to measure the potentials deeper into the, uh, into the, surf, into the muscle, you are going to use needle electrodes. Uh, okay, so surface electrodes, they are metal discs with diameters, very small diameter of 0.5 to 2.5 centimeters. It is not possible to take the deeper potentials with surface electrodes since needle electrodes are used. The next one is your needle electrodes. The needle electrodes, they are inserted into or close to the tissue from which the electrical activity is to be recorded. Okay, they are inserted into or they are placed close to the tissue from which electrical activity is to be recorded. They will record the activity from a much smaller area than surface electrodes. Surface electrodes are disc shaped. These are needle shaped. So, their uh, contact surface is in the form of a point. So, for a, from a smaller area you can record the activity. Okay, they permit the activity of the single motor unit to be studied. Single motor unit. Motor units are nothing but muscle fibers, group of muscle fibers. So, okay. The outer shaft of the needle electrode is usually made of stainless steel because of its mechanical strength. We are using the outer shaft of the needle electrodes are generally made of stainless steel. The recording area of the needle electrodes is usually less than 1 square mm. So, this point area is 1 mm square, 1 millimeter square. So, for, from a very small area, uh, you are tapping the voltage using the needle electrodes, using the needle electrodes. So, this is the figure for a needle electrode. You can see the calf muscles, the, uh, the muscle fibers, these are the, the motor units, they are called the needle electrode is pierced into the muscle fibers. So, you have a stainless steel uh, the needle electrode outer shaft is made up of stainless steel which can, you can observe inside the in the figure 
because of the mechanical strength okay so this is about your needle electrodes so these are the emg electrodes how you are going to place the emg you can observe you can see in the figure the emg electrodes are placed uh, in the you are measuring the biopotentials from the upper arm okay then we have the two three types of electrodes which we most commonly use fine wire electrodes then surface electrodes they are as you can see they are disc shaped small disc shaped surface electrodes and then we have the needle electrodes which are in the form of a needle needle electrodes so needle again these needle electrodes are again divided into three types concentric needle electrodes bipolar needle electrodes and monopolar needle electrodes so the needle electrodes uh, they have very small area of contact so their sensitivity is more and they are they are, they are classified again into three basic types concentric needle electrodes and bipolar needle electrodes and monopolar needle electrodes concentric electrodes uh, concentric needle electrodes it consists of a hollow steel needle through which a silver wire is run silver or steel or platinum wire is run and insulated except at its tip so it is insulated this entire wire is insulated only at its tip it is not insulated you have a hollow steel needle through which runs a silver or steel or platinum wire the potential difference between the outer shaft and the tip of the wire is measured the patient is grounded by a surf separate surface electrode the patient is grounded by a separate uh, surface electrode so concentric needle electrodes consists of hollow steel needle uh, through which your uh, uh, steel or platinum or silver wire is run and insulated except at its tip the potential difference between the outer shaft and the tip of the wire is measured you are going to measure the potential difference between the outer shaft and the tip of the wire the patient is grounded by a separate surface electrode concentric needle electrodes hollow steel needle as i told you you have a hollow steel needle with a silver or a steel wire uh, the outer shaft is insulated and the tip of the wire is uh, is bare and it is uh, inserted to the area of measurement this is the structure of the concentric needle electrode you have a hollow steel needle a silver or steel or platinum wire is inserted and outer shaft is insulated and you have the tip of the wire then bipolar needle electrodes bipolar needle electrodes it is a hollow needle containing two pieces of platinum wires whereas in the uh, earlier one we have concentric needle electrodes why they are said to be concentric needle electrodes we have because we have a hollow cylinder inside you are placing the platinum wire the concentric outer shaft is on uh, whereas whereas in the case of bipolar uh, needle electrodes we have two platinum wires each of which are insulated except at their tips the outer shaft is grounded and the potential difference between the two inner wires is measured we have two wires so the potential difference between the two wires is measured so that is the difference in construction between the bipolar needle electrodes and your concentric needle electrodes bipolar and concentric needle electrodes then we have the third variety is monopolar needle electrodes monopolar it is a solid still till now we have seen a hollow stainless steel needle but now it is a solid stainless steel needle which is insulated except at its tip you have a solid stainless steel needle uh, and it is insulated only uh, all throughout except at its tip the potential difference between this needle and from the second uh, needle electrode is measured as and the patient is grounded separately so you are going to measure the potential difference between this needle and the uh, and from a second needle electrode is measured and the patient is grounded separately the patient is grounded separately the block diagram of emg recording setup this is the block diagram of emg recording setup you can see the in the block diagram you can see the hand the hand is the transducer hand is the sensor here the biopotentials are tapped from the hand and you have a amplifier which pick ups the potentials that are generated from the muscular action 
then this amplifier amplified signal is sent to your uh, other power amplifier to the loudspeaker and you have a tape recorder to record the, uh, the audio signals that are being generated and you have a dual trace CRO uh, which will give you the uh, display visual display of the uh, EMG signals that are being generated that are being generated. Coming to the working of your EMG recording setup. The EMG potentials from the tissues under study are picked up. Okay. The EMG signals which are potentials, EMG potentials from the tissues uh, under study are picked up by the recording electrodes and they are fed to an amplifier. They are fed to an amplifier which is connected to a CRO. A loudspeaker system or through an audio amplifier and a magnetic tape recorder. The amplifier is a high gain and a differential amplifier you are using. The EMG frequency range is about 5 hertz to 2000 hertz and above. The range of the frequency is from 5 hertz to 2000 hertz and above. Since the bandwidth of a single EMG is large, the EMG machines are usually provided with a set of filters which cut off frequency about 200 hertz hertz with cutoff frequencies above 200 hertz. So the EMG frequency range is about 5 hertz to 2000 hertz and above the bandwidth of, of the single EMG is large. The EMG machines are usually provided with a set of filters which cuts off the frequency above 200 hertz above 200 hertz. The amplifier which is a differential amplifier must have uniform frequency response from 10 hertz to 1 kilohertz and high CMRR that is 80 to 100 dB. So input imprints greater than 10 mega ohms and sensitivity of the order of 1 micro volts per mm. Sensitivity of the order of 1 micro volt per mm. Input imprints greater than 10 mega ohms and sensitivity of the order of 1 micro volt per mm. The amplified signals can be monitored visually and acoustically and stored for further analysis at a later date. So this amplified signal uh, it can be stored for further analysis at a later date. A photographic device is usually available so that a permanent record can be made of the oscilloscope display when necessary. You can take a photograph also uh, so that you can have a permanent record of the uh, waveform that has been generated. An oscilloscope readout instead of a graphic pen recorder is used because of the high frequency response required. Okay, you are using an oscilloscope readout instead of a graphic pen recorder because of the high frequency response that is being that is required then an electrical simulator is incorporated into the system and it is connected with the CRO so that it can trigger the sweep of the later okay a trained listener can judge the condition of the muscle by the volume and characteristic tones produced by the loudspeaker during muscle contraction during muscle contraction some sounds are generated audible signals are, uh, audio frequency signals are generated so if he if the if the uh, person who is listening them is trained he can judge the condition of the muscle by the volume and characteristic tones produced by the loudspeaker during muscle contraction during muscle contraction now let us see how you can make the measurement uh, of emg an EMG is performed by a neurologist. Usually a neurologist performs the EMG, a doctor who is specialized in uh, brain and nerve disorders. Although a technologist may also perform some portions of the test. EMG is generally performed by uh, a doctor who is specialized in uh, brain and nerve disorders. EMG is usually performed immediately following a nerve conduction test. A uh, nerve conduction test is nothing but a test that measures the flow of current through a nerve before it reaches the muscle rather than response of the muscle itself. Rather than the response of the muscle itself, you are going to measure the uh, flow of current through a nerve before it reaches the muscle.
so generally an emg procedure follows this process you will have to uh, uh, you will be asked to remove your clothing and you will be given a gown to wear wear when you are undergoing the emg and test all the jewelry and hair pins and uh, eye glasses and hearing aids or any other metal objects that may interfere with the procedure they are to be removed immediately and you are asked to lie down or sit or lie down for the test a neurologist will locate the muscle to be studied whichever the the muscle you are having the pain or uh, which are, which is to be investigated uh, your uh, neurologist will locate that muscle the skin will be cleansed with an antiseptic solution and next a fine fine steel sterile needle will be inserted into the muscle you are using needle electrodes most commonly a ground electrode will be positioned under your arm or leg you are going to use a ground electrode which is placed under your arm or leg five or more needle insertions may be necessary for the test you may experience slight pain with the insertion of the electrode but it is usually painless by insertion of the needle electrode you may feel a slight pain but usually you don't feel it you don't experience it if the test is painful you must tell your examiner because this can interfere with the results okay any small any slight uh, changes will uh, change the emg pattern so you must immediately tell your examiner okay when you will be uh, then you will be asked to relax and then perform slight or full strength muscle contractions okay after after you are placed comfortably then you will be asked to relax and then perform slight or full strength muscle contraction the electrical activity from your working muscle will be measured and displayed on the oscilloscope it will be displayed on the oscilloscope an audio amplifier may also be used so that both the appearance and the sound of the electrical potentials can be evaluated okay you are going to use an audio amplifier which may also be used so that both the appearance and the sound of the electrical potentials can be evaluated if the recorder is attached to an audio amplifier you may hear a sound like a hail on a tin roof when you contract your muscle if the recorder is attached when you are uh, asked an audio amplifier will be used to uh, so that both the appearance and sound of the electrical potential can be evaluated if the recorder is attached to an audio amplifier you may hear a sound like hail on a tin roof when you contract your muscles after the procedure some muscle soreness may persist for a day or or so following the procedure notify your doctor if you are experiencing increasing pain tenderness swelling or pus at the needle insertion sites your physicians may give you suggestions or additional uh, alternative instructions from after the procedure depending on your particular situation if it is very painful or some soreness or some uh, inflammation has occurred in the region of insertion of the needle you must immediately uh, intimate to your physicians okay then analysis of emg emg analysis we have two types of analysis that is qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis qualitative analysis that is visual inspection of the record you are going to visually inspect the uh, wave pattern that is being generated that is called qualitative analysis quantitative analysis is you are going to measure the amplitude the duration and the frequency and you can observe the power spectrum analysis also okay two types of analysis uh, after the emg waveform is being generated you are going to you are going to analyze the waveform using two types of analysis can be done one is qualitative analysis that is by visually inspection of the record you can observe the you can analyze the waveform then quantitative analysis it depends on amplitude and the time duration and frequency and power spectrum analysis can also be done for surface emg signals the amplitude is in a range between 0 to 10 millivolts okay this is very important to remember uh the amplitude of the emg signal is is in the range of 0 to 10 millivolts and the frequency range is restricted from 10 to 500 hertz 
when you are using surface EMG signals. The amplitude is in the range of uh, range between 0 to 10 millivolts and uh, the frequency range is restricted from 10 to 500. So, this is the common waveform which you can observe. Uh, when you observe in the figure, we have A is the neural normal MUAP, MUAP and B, B figure represents neuropathic MUAP and C myopathic MUAP. Normal MUAP, MUAP is motor unit action potential. This is the action potential generated in the muscle fibers. When, when the fiber is normal, when there is no, when there is no other disease or uh, any other problem, normal uh, action potential waveform you get a waveform of that sort shown in the figure uh, like two spikes uh, and there is a variation if there is a problem if there is a uh, ailment in the body like neuropathic or myopathic what is neuropathic neuropathic is nothing but it is the pain uh, which is caused in the uh, caused due to nerve damage or malfunctioning of the nervous system. So, neuropathic uh, uh, motor unit action potential, you can observe that uh, the peaks, uh, the, the nature of the peak has changed. The nature of the peak has changed when compared to the normal MUAP, normal mo motor unit action potential. That is the waveform of normal, normal person. Whereas, when the person is suffering with uh, nerve disorder, or nerve damage or malfunctioning of the nervous system the emg waveform pattern has changed when in the C, in the figure see you can observe that the patient is myopathic when the patient is myopathic that means uh, muscle weakness there is a primary it is a it is a neuromuscular disorder in which the primary sim symptom is muscle weakness due to dysfunction of muscle fiber it is muscle weakness due to dysfunction of muscle fiber the biopathies are neuromuscular disorders in which the primary system is muscle weakness due to dysfunctioning of the muscle fiber. So, there is a, there is a, the, there is a problem in the myopathic MUAP. You can see the uh, waveforms are compressed more. They are under stress. That means due to muscle weakness, due to dysfunctioning of the muscle fiber, the regular pattern is disturbed the regular pattern is disturbed so analyzing the emg signal from the uh, from the waveform you can analyze uh, you can find out certain uh, uh, certain defects what are they more mu units more motor units more amplitude when the number of muscle fibers are more more neurons are there more action potential is generated then more amplitude is produced and more spikes and more turn in signals Suppose you are changing the firing rate, then frequency, change in the frequency content of the EMG signal will be varying. If the firing rate is changing, change in the frequency content of the EMG signal is changed. If the muscle fibers, uh, if you change in the type of muscle fibers, then the, there is a change in the AP velocity. AP is action potential velocity. So, say change in EMG frequency. So, EMG is a spatial and temporal summation of the APs of all the APs of all the action potentials. So, it is a summation of all the spatial and temporal, uh, temporal uh, signals that are being generated. Therefore, uh, the motor more the motor units more is the amplitude and more are the spikes and more is the turns in the signal. So, change in firing rate there is a change in the frequency content of the EMG signal and change in the muscle fiber type also. So, change in action potential velocity results in change in EMG frequency. So, EMG is a spatial and temporal summation of all the action potentials. So, this figure represents how the amplitude of the EMG waveform varies with muscle contraction intensity. When your muscles are under action, when they begin to contract, how is the EMG amplitude changes? Amplitude will be increasing as shown in the figure we are draw, drawing a figure uh, taking a force at uh, the joint on the x axis and normalized EMG signal that means its voltage amount of voltage that is being generated on the y axis. So, you are observing a slightly non-linear relationship.
okay it is not straight it is slightly non linear so amplitude with amplitude what happens the muscle contraction intensity will be increasing non linearly it is increasing but it is non linear okay Ampl as amplitude increases the muscle contraction increases when does amplitude increase when there are more muscle fibers which are motor units more are considered your uh, amplitude of the waveform will be increased what are the factors which influence this signal that is being measured there are certain factors which we must keep in mind when we are measuring the emg signals geometrical and analytical uh, anatomical factors and we have other factors called physiological factors they are classified into two types geometrical and anatomical factors like the electrode size the type of the electrode the shape its size and shape electrode separation distance between the re with respect to the muscle tendon junctions okay the separation distance between the electrodes and thickness of skin and substantial fats okay how thick the skin is and the substantial fat that is present that also will be affecting the measured signal and misalignment between the electrodes and the fiber misalignment muscle fiber there is a misalignment between the electrodes and the fiber alignment so these are the geometrical and anatomical factors which influence the uh, signal that is being measured that is the electrode size they depend on the electrode shape then electrode separation distance with respect to muscle tendon fung junctions then thickness of the skin and subcutaneous fat misalignment between electrodes and fiber alignment then the next one is it depends on other factors like physiological factors blood flow and temperature type and level of contraction muscle fiber conduction velocity number of motor units degree of motor unit synchronization so these are the physiological factors like blood flow and temperature type and level of contraction muscle fiber contraction velocity conduction velocity number of motor units degree of motor unit synchronization then coming to the applications of emg signal emg signals are used for muscle diagnosis control of prosthetic and orthosis prosthetic or artificial limbs and uh, orthosis are nothing but artificial ex external devices serving to support your limbs or spine or to prevent or assist relative movement to prevent or assist relative movement orthosis are braces splint or other artificial external devices uh, serving to support the limbs or spine or to prevent or assist relative movements kinesiology degree and sequence of contraction of various muscles participating in a movement the, it is the sequence of uh, or the degree of degree and sequence of contraction of various muscles participating in a movement what are the various muscles that are participating from being bringing about a movement so it is the degree and sequence kine kinesiology and a sequence of contraction mechanism employed by the body for grading the force of muscular contraction it is the mechanism which has been employed by the body for grading the force of muscular uh, contraction clinical uh, diagnosis and follow up my myopathies and response of nerve and muscle to injury response of nerve and muscle to injury so these are the various applications of emg signal so to summarize our presentation today we we have discussed i have discussed the topics of electrical activity of the electrical activity of the muscles electrical activity of the muscles muscles are nothing but physiological motors of human body they are uh, an indication of the uh, kinetics and kinematics uh, are good indication of the muscle groups for increased specificity we measure muscle activity during a gait my electromyograph is a 
is the detection and recording of electrical signals produced by the muscle tissues as it contracts produced by the muscle tissues as it contracts then measurement of electrical signals within the muscle where with the two electrodes so the we have different types of electrodes are utilized actually how is this activity carried out uh, when uh, when the, how how is the activity carried out so emg signals that is summation of when uh, when the external signal within that muscles with two measurement of electrical signals within the muscles with two electrodes a summation of the action potentials generated during contraction due to change in the cell membrane potential the size of signal is dependent dependent upon the number and the frequency of the firing of the motor units so motor units must be that motor units are nothing but muscle fibers they must be given an instinct so it depends upon the number of number as well as the frequency of the firing of the motor units uh, what do we measure we measure the indication of muscle activity we see the relative changes in the timings of the muscles we assess the motor control and coordination uh, we determine any evidence of spasticity and evaluate the muscle function sport surgical transfer electromyography is a technique which is used for evaluating and recording the electrical activity produced by the skeleton muscles and the instrument used is called electromyograph and the record is called electromyogram at resting state muscles does not show any uh, recordable electrical potentials but with increase of force of contraction amplitudes of the potential increases so electromyograph detects electrical potential generated by the muscle cells when these cells are electrically or neurologically activated so myogram is an instrument which is used to used to record the electrical activity of the muscles to determine whether the muscle is contracting or not or for displaying in a crvo and a loudspeaker the action potentials okay the record of this muscle contraction is called as electromyogram muscle contractions are caused by depolarization of the muscle fibers so the muscle potentials ranges from point uh, ranges from 20 microvolts to 5 millivolts and the duration is 2 to 15 milliseconds 2 to 15 milliseconds then we have seen the types of electrodes that are used uh, there are two types of electrodes the surface electrodes and needle electrodes surface electrodes are nothing but metal metal disc electrodes stainless steel metal disc electrodes with a diameter of 0.5 to 2.5 cm it is not possible to take the deeper potentials with surface electrodes hence we make use of needle electrodes needle electrodes are electrodes which are inserted into the uh, into the tissue from which electrical activity is to be re recorded they will record the electrical activity for a much a smaller area than the surface electrodes and they permit the activity of the motor units uh, and their recording area of the needle electrodes is usually very small because of its uh, point type structure the outer shaft is uh, protected by insulated casing and you have the inner uh, wire which is the sensor or the needle okay so the needle electrodes are again uh, we have different types of needle electrodes the concentric metal concentric needle electrodes and bipolar needle electrodes and monopolar needle electrodes in the concentric electrode it consists of a hollow steel needle through which a silver wire is run or stainless steel or platinum wire is run which except in, in and the wire is insulated except at its tip so the potential difference between the outer shaft and the tip is a measure of the uh, bioelectric potentials that are generated uh, for emg uh, then we have the bipolar needle electrodes it is a hollow needle containing uh, two pieces of platinum wires in the first one we have one piece now we are two pieces and you are measuring the potential between the two inner wires then this type of electrode is called bipolar needle electrodes then we have the monopolar needle electrodes it is having solid stainless steel needle which is insulated except at its tip and the potential difference is measured between this needle and from a second needle okay the re emg recording setup consists of uh, Uh, the differential amp consists of the electrodes which are placed to the 
uh, muscle fibers which are uh, attached to the metal muscle fibers and those five those electrodes are connected to the differential amplifier and we have the uh, speaker and the tape recorder or dual trace triargo which you can observe the emg potentials from the tissue under study are picked up by recording electrodes and fed to the amplifier which is connected to the cro a loudspeaker system through an audible amplifier and a magnetic tape recorder the amplifier gain is very high uh, and uh, its uh, frequency range is about 5 hertz to 2000 hertz uh, and its bandwidth is very large uh, and a cutoff frequency of about 2200 hertz is used so the amplifier has uniform frequency response from 10 hertz to 1 kilohertz with the high cmrr of 80 to 100 db 80 to 100 db photographic devices is also usual usually available so that a permanent record of the uh, oscilloscope display is is uh, can be recorded okay instead of uh, an oscilloscope readout instead of graphic pen recorder is used because of high frequency response then we have the we know the procedure how to take the uh, emg measurement and we have studied about the uh, emg wave pattern analysis of the emg signal emg wave pattern uh, we have normal emg wave uh, and then uh, neuropathic and myopathic waveforms we have studied analyzing the sample if there are more number of motor units more amplitude so more spikes and more turn signals turns more turns in the signal and changing in the firing rate also change it results in changing the frequency content of the emg signal and changing the muscle fiber type also changes in the action potential velocity and changing the emg frequency so emg is a spatial and temporal summation of the action potentials temporal summation of the action potentials uh, then with increase in amplitude the uh, contraction of the uh, with increased amplitude increases with increased contraction of the intensity but it is not a linear relationship the relationship is not linear but if the muscle contraction intensity is increased the amplitude of the waveform is also increased there are certain factors which influence the signal under measurement that is electrode size the shape of the electrode the distance between the uh, muscle tendon and the junctions and the thickness of the skin and subconscious uh, uh, fat and misalignments between the electrodes and the fiber alignments these all fall under the category of geometric uh, anatomical factors and atomical factors then we have other physiological factors like blood flow the temperature type and level of con contraction muscle fiber conduction velocity the number of motor units and degree of motor unit synchronization all these factors influence the signals signal that is to be measured then the uh, coming to the applications uh, they are used for muscle diagnostics control of prosthetic and uh, orthosis uh, uh, that is post prosthetic or artificial limbs and other these are also artificial orthosis are also artificial braces or uh, external devices which are used as a support for limbs or spine and to prevent or assist relative movement assist relative movement then they are used in kinesiology degree of degree and sequence of contraction of various muscle participating in the mechanism in the movement mechanism employed by the body for the grade grading the force of muscular contraction grading the force of muscular contraction in chemical in clinical diagnosis and follow up myopathies and responses of nerves and muscles to injury okay clinical diagnosis also they are used they are used in neuro uh, uh, myopathies that is neuromuscular disorders in which the uh, primary symptom is muscle weakness neuro myopathies are neuromuscular disorders that is the symptoms is muscle weakness due to dysfunctioning of the muscle fibers so these are the various application areas where you are using your electromyogram uh, for analysis of muscular activities so with this we have understood the concepts of electrical activity of the muscles electrodes used for emg measurement schematic diagram of the emg machine 
working of EMG machine and applications of EMG measurement. With this, I would like to end my presentation today.